In this video, I'm gonna go through step-by-step step how to use the Motion Cam app. If you're not familiar with the Motion Cam app, it allows you to shoot raw video, raw DNG files on your cell phone, selected devices. So if you're into that, stay tuned. Now, as far as equipment again, guys, like I said, I'm going to just be using the Moment ND filter. Uh, an ND filter I'm gonna be using is gonna be two to 400. I definitely advise using an ND filter if you plan on keeping your shutter speed locked as close as possible to 50% or half of your shutter speed. Um, so this is gonna be something that's needed. You don't have to have this, you can just leave it in full auto mode, but I like to film everything in full manual mode. So this is definitely one thing that you really need to have, especially if you wanna start filming at the, the correct shutter speed with the correct frame rate. All right, guys, so this is what I'm basically going to do. The first thing I like to do here is set my white balance. Go ahead and lock that. Then I'm gonna jump into my shutter speed. Again, in this case here, my settings are going to be 24 frames, and then I'm going to be having uh, image stabilization off. I could turn on sensor clipping, and then I also like to turn, uh, have it into full HD mode because 4K doesn't, I get a lot of drop frames. And then we'll leave it like that. Set my shutter speed here down to 50. In this case, I'm doing 24 frames. I wanna get that to closest to 50, there we go. And then here I do have my ND as max as possible. So what I will do is go to my ISO, make sure my ISO is the lowest possible also. And I'm gonna cheat here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this up one click. I'm gonna go to 60. Okay, that's not too bad. That killed a little bit of the overblown stuff in the background there. Alrighty. And then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and set my focus. Focus here on the flowers. Let's get those nice and sharp right about there. And I'm actually gonna get a little bit closer and get that locked right there. And then hit record. And I'm gonna go ahead and record, keeping an eye on my memory usage. I don't want that to get in the red because then I notice I start to get some drop frames there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do about 10 seconds and stop. All right, guys, so next what I wanna do here is get this building. And what I'm gonna do here, let's get this in focus here. Alrighty, so what I'm gonna do on this one here, again, I got my ND at max, it's at 100%. And as far as our clipping, it doesn't look like we're clipping too bad on this shot here. Turn this on, I wish they would fix that. Like every time you close it, the, the settings kind of lose. So again, I gotta go and reset everything. And that just kind of sucks, but hey. I wanna go 50, and now you can really see that the highlights are getting blown out. Let me make sure we're at 100 on the ISO as low as possible. And again, I'm gonna tab lock white balance just one more time. And again, the subject of our shot here is the building. So I think what I'm gonna do is cheat it down again on the shutter speed. Let's go to 60, maybe one more, 80 to the most, right? Okay, that's a little bit more manageable. Since it's clipping a lot here on the left side of the shot, I'm going to, I'm on the right side of the shot, I'm going to kind of just cheat it over this way. And there's my building. And let's go ahead and just hit record. Again, keeping my eye on memory usage. I don't want that to get in the red because then I start to drop frames. And I think I'll do it for 10 seconds again. And boom. All right, so this time I'm gonna do one here in the shadows. And again, here, let's go ahead and see how bad we are. Uh, sensor wise, it's clipping, I got to turn that on. And it's not so bad here, but I'm gonna actually lift off a little bit on my ND filter. And I'm gonna tweak it all the way open. Okay, all the way open is not bad. It's not bad, we're not getting any clipping highlights. So what I'm actually gonna do is just bring it back on. I'll let, I like to keep my highlights, it's kind of, minimal as possible to give it that cinematic look there, controlling that. Okay, then again, let's open this back up to 60, 50 frames. Okay, now we got some clipping happening. I'm gonna go ahead and turn up, turn up again a little bit more on my ND filter till it goes away. And I'm filling right about there. And let's kind of get a shot on this lock here. Now I'm gonna go to my focus, make sure I set my focus. I'm gonna get kind of close here. Let's get as close as we can possibly can. All right, it's kind of like a detailed close-up shot of this lock here. 
and I'm gonna try to anchor my finger here on this and get it right there and okay white balance is locked and record watching my memory usage getting about 10 seconds and boom all right guys so i'm inside here i basically took all of my files off of my cell uh, off of my hard drive and put them on my computer in a special little folder i am now inside of the motion cam tool i'm using version 0 0.20 0 0.20 and basically what i typically do from here is if you look right here it says add raw containers to convert i'll go ahead and hit add then i i go to the folder where i saved all of my files and then boom here are the containers that pop up right here the four shots that i shot outside i'll go ahead and select those and typically while i'm also in this menu i would like to make a folder so i'll right click here and hit add new folder and i call it done basically because after we convert these this is what i want to save the dng files so again select my four uh, shots go ahead and hit open they populate right here in this little box and then you can actually do a quick little preview here at the top there's a preview frames you can just drag this slider here and you can kind of preview your shots here so here are the four shots that i basically took basically here they are Okay, now all of this other stuff here on the right, I've never really messed with it and I haven't got into it yet. So I'm not gonna talk, I'm not gonna talk about it here. So uh, I think here it says remove noise by stacking frames, additional noise reduction. Haven't messed with it yet, so I'm not gonna talk about it. But what I do know is I keep everything stock here, apply vignette correction to DNGs, compress DNGs. I leave all of that stuff checked. And what I basically do is come into this section here and say, uh, select where to store DNG files. And then I hit select. And then I basically click on the folder that we just previously made where we're gonna save it. Go ahead and set, select that folder. Then you just hit convert DNGs and then we'll convert them to that. I've already done it just because it's heavy on the computer and I didn't want to do it while I'm screen capturing. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to that folder inside of DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how we bring them in there and, and put them into video. All right guys, so we're inside of DaVinci Resolve. Now what I typically do when I come into DaVinci Resolve, I immediately go to this far left tab. It's just the, the, the media data import place where you can import all your stuff here and then um, go to where you saved it and here I have already my favorites I've kind of saved my one of my hard drives that I typically use a lot all the time I found my folder basically where I saved it it was done and then I click on side of here now we see four individual folders these are the videos these are, are the DNG files that we need to go ahead and bring those in and what I from typically do from here is um, I'll just grab all of the folders highlight them and then I'll drag them and click and hold and drop them on top of the word master. Drop them right on top of the word master. And what that does, it actually automatically brings them in and their own separate folders and they're already ready to go. They're all synced up here. And now if I click on this, I can hit play. And now I can see I'm not getting great playback at the moment here because I'm also doing a screen capture record. And there's my file. Look at that. That is just fantastic. Looking really good here. And again, this was before I had my uh, new ND filter. So again, I was at the max on, on, on possibly trying to save highlights here. So I'm, I'm happy I got this newer ND filter, which I'm going to do another video updating using RAW with the new ND filter. But here we can see up here in the top right, DNG, 24 frames per second. Uh, 1936 by 1090 and it's all ready to go DNG files raw DNG files which is super cool and then quickly what I would typically do here is just go ahead and go to that folder and then drag it onto the timeline and let's go ahead and just grab these other ones I'll highlight these other three and it doesn't let me do them I'll actually hang out if I drag those three highlight them come into here highlight them and then boom there they are they're all on the timeline the videos are right there okay so from here that's pretty much it all you need to do is go to your render settings and let me quickly show you the render settings that I use the re the render settings I made a special preset if I come over here I click on my settings 
And since this was DNG files, I will change one other thing. But basically here, format, I do an MP4. Uh, Kodak is an H264. And my resolution, I would switch this tier to 38040 by 260 just to just to, to contain that the DNG quality so I won't downgrade it as much. So I'll just go ahead and do the highest output I possibly can. I'm using the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Uh, frame rate 24 per second and then I changed here my quality I said restrict to 40,000 kilobytes per second and I leave uh, encode profile at auto keyframes at auto and I have frame rendering check and that's pretty much all I've changed these settings I've gotten from another YouTube I follow and his name is Kazi he does color grading in DaVinci Resolve. He gave his preset of how he saves out stuff that he uses coming off of Alexa and big high-end cameras. And I figure if those settings work properly for those cameras, it's gonna work pretty much good for my cell phone for my 8-bit footage, right? <laughs> so I use those settings and I've used them for years and if I've never had any issues with them. So I've saved that preset. And that's basically all I would do. Then I'll just go ahead and hit add to render queue and then render it out. Now, for those of you who wanna see how I get in depth on color grading, this stuff what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a separate video for those of you who are into the color grading uh, just for a small little fee for the price of a Starbucks coffee um, you guys can watch me get in-depth on color grading this but for those of you who are still here with me now what I'm just gonna quickly do here is just do a basic basic grade not even a color grade just a color correction of how I would basically try to get these images to look decent all right guys so this is what we're gonna do here so this is how I would basically do it I'm not a pro I'm not a professional this is just how I do things there's many different ways to do this. So just find out what works great for you. Like I said, I'm still learning and I've watched many other YouTubers, especially Kazi, uh, on how he does this. So I'm kind of doing what I've learned from him, okay? So what I do first off, being raw DNGs, we want to take advantage of that, right? So if we click over here, we go into our raw camera settings and um, we can come down here to project and then you can select clip. Now we have access to all the raw tools for his color grading. Now, if you want to like see here, we our highlights are a little bit blown out and it's like you look on the scope here at the top, they're blown out. Yeah, we can't really save too much of it, but we can save a little bit because it's raw, right? So one thing I would come and do and go into highlights and pull down the highlights. And you can see it's kind of, it's pulling them down a little bit, but again, the, we burnt that image, right? And then what other do you can click on gain and gain is also the highlight, the top end. You can see on the histogram, I mean, on the on the, the scopes, how that's moving, right? So I could bring that down a little bit. One other option you can do inside of Vinci uh, Vault is highlight recovery. You can click on this and it will kind of, re kind of, high, kind of basically recover some of those highlights that were kind of burnt. But this image is what it is. Uh, what I would try to do is bring the base down here to the zero with the shadows, not all the way, but there's not a lot of shadows in here. There's a little bit of shadows here and some here but we can bring that in by grabbing the lift and just dragging that down, right? Okay, now you see we brought that shadow in a little bit more there. And then um, what I like to do is go to color boost. I like to boost that up to like 10 and then mid details. I like to boost that up around 10 also. And uh, that's pretty much it. Again, if the shadows, you could bring more shadows into play there, vice versa with the gain, here's my gain. And again, I'm just pulling the gain just so it's not off the top there. Again, this image is a little bit blown out. So that is one way you could you can do this. You can also do your color temperature and all that, your exposure here. I could bring the exposure down. Check it out. Woo! Look at that control. That is just awesome, right? So we can bring the exposure down a little bit. Now, again, bringing the exposure down, we need to compensate for the shadows. And it's always a yin-yang with uh, color grading. If you bring one up, you're going to have to bring the It's going to be like that all the time. And like say here, uh, shadows, let's go ahead and bring those back up because it's getting a little bit too dark there. And my lift, I would also kind of bring that back up, okay? So that's one way of possibly doing it. And also if you look here on the gamma, it's set to sRGB. You probably want to set it to uh, Rec 709. So there we go, that would be Rec 709. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and reset all of this. And I'm gonna show you another way to do this. This is what something I've been doing recently. Uh, now we'll go into this wheel here on the right and then I'll come into my color management and I'll go DaVinci uh, Sci Color Science. I go to DaVinci Resolve uh, Color Manage. And it's kind of like telling DaVinci, hey, recognize my m what my footage is and gets me in the right ballpark. So it already knows that I'm using 
a DNG, which should be Rec. 709 format, right? It already knows that and it made a slight quick adjustment already for me. So it's already got me in the ballpark here. And then I can go in and continue to use these tools if I wanted to, or, you know, for this case, like I'm not doing nothing super serious. I would just use the color wheels, the primary wheels. So here again, the lift controls down here. It basically brings all my shadows down. And then I got my gamma, which is the mids, the mids. And this brings it in an average. It kind of brings everything down. And then here's my hot, my gain, which would be the top end, right? So I can bring the gain down a little bit, bring my lift down a little bit, bring my gamma kind of right about there. Okay. So that is what that is. Now, if I hit alt Z, it switches over to log wheels. Now log wheels allow me to control just the shadows. Here's just the shadows. I'm not affecting the mids or the highs. I'm just affecting just the lower end. Now here's the mids. I can control just the mid tones. See that there, especially in the middle of the uh, building. I can bring that down a little bit. And then here's the highlights again, controlling the overall highlights. And again, our highlights are burnt, so we can't save that much. Okay, so pretty much there. So that controls that. And I pretty much like to use, I'll go back and tweet, but back in between before uh back in between blah, 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 back and forth between the color primaries and the log wheels and that's pretty much how i would do it so let's move over to a different image that's not so blown out like this one here is pretty good again i tried to get this image as best as possible while i was shooting so i don't have to do a lot of work now so get it as close to exposure as, as you want it. Get it close, get your white balance, get everything. Like I'm happy with this. This is pretty much done. I don't really have to do a lot. I can do a little bit of color balance here. I can see there's a little bit of a blue tint to it. And you can even see here, this line, look how high the blue is, right? So a little bit of color balance. I was also in the shadows, so that's also fair, but I can just bring that blue down. Okay, I went to my temperature and just brought it, brought the, the orange up, which brought the blue down. Okay, and there it's, it's pretty much white balance, right? And that's pretty much it. That's all I would do for the, if I wanted to add a little bit more to the bottom in here, I would then, I don't want to affect everything else. I'll hit Alt Z, go to my shadows and just kind of pull my shadows down just a little bit there, get a little more contrast in the image, right? And that's it. That's all I would basically do with this image here. And again, you just copy, repeat, you go to the next one. Now, since these two, frames here are kind of alike. You can see here, this first one I did, the exposure was a little bit high and a little bit overexposed. So I reshot it because I didn't like it. And I reshot it with a lower exposure. And again, I did that on purpose. I was like, okay, this one looks a little bit too hot. Okay, let me do one more and crush it a little bit, bring it down lower. And then boom, here that one is. So now I have the, the option to select. I like, I honestly like this one better. So I would just use this one here. Again, just quickly adjust my white balance or I can do an auto white balance, collect this tick, this dropper here. Uh, I like to click on the clouds because that's white, right? Click on the clouds, boom, it makes a little adjustment there. Let's say it's too dark here in the shadows. We want to bring up more details. Again, I can just grab my log wheel, lift that up just a little bit there. And maybe we want to bring our highlights down, bring our highlights down just a tad bit and then boom, that's it. Now, if I wanted to just copy this setting to another one, if I right click in the middle, hit grab still, right? Now I click on this image here that I wanna work on, mouse over this and hit middle mouse button, hold it down, boom. Now it basically copied the settings that I made on the other one and proved this. This may happen here, if this happens, just go ahead and click here and it takes it back, right? So now it basically copied the settings from this one to this one, but this was still exposed slightly different. So that's why it looks a little bit different. So boom, that's how I do that.